How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Thursday here on the show, and you know what that means. Dynamite was last night. I predicted it was going to be a big show, and it was, in fact, a big show. Although we got a lot of big shows coming, because we only have uh, three and a half weeks left until the... AEW All Out Pay-Per-View. And on the show last night, we had Chris Jericho falling to John Moxley. John Moxley remains the interim AEW champion. And he now will apparently be facing the returning CM Punk. Made his big return last night. Ran a bunch of people off. Hopped around on one leg, I guess, to show that he was ready to go. And I guess we'll see how they do the build. Seems obvious. One guy's a champion, one guy's the interim champion. So that's uh, that's going to be likely the main event of All Out, unless they throw some sort of monkey wrench in there. So that is uh, that. We've also got the brackets for the Trios title tournament. They've announced, after all these years, the Trios title tournament brackets. And we have eight teams one of which is the trust busters now granted there's a lot of people injured a lot of people hurt and so ultimately there's going to be a million six-man teams but i do have to say when i first thought of the idea i didn't think about it but when i first considered the idea of six-man tag team titles i thought my god there's like 500 teams turns out there's seven and I guess a new one coming in, the Trust Busters. So anyway, the uh, first match will take place on August 17th. And uh, we'll tell you about the brackets and all of the rest of the news and more after we get back from the break. So stick around, Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, did you know I wrote two books? I heard. Actually, I wrote three. I know. But uh, I just wanted to plug them because I posted them on my Twitter. If you go up there at Brian Alvarez, you can get uh, the Death of WCW Anniversary Edition is $10 right now on Amazon. And the 100 Things WWE Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die is also $10 on Amazon. So if you haven't read either of those, they're 10 bucks today. So the links are up there on my Twitter. And uh, you can also, if you uh, have never subscribed to Audible... If you subscribe to Audible.com, they give you two free audiobooks. And so you can actually grab the Death of WCW audiobook, which I narrated seven hours, and it's free if you sign up for a free trial, actually, for uh, for Audible. So it's just free, 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 free. So head up there to, uh, to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. And I should mention, by the way, that uh, if you ever go to Amazon.com, if you do a lot of shopping on Amazon, you can actually go to Smile. Dot amazon.com and you can uh, bookmark it smile.amazon.com and you can set it up so that anything you buy on amazon a uh a charity nonprofit, etc of your choice gets a uh, donation and whale scout is up there so if you want to if you if you're on amazon a lot and you want to support whale scout it's very easy just go to smile.amazon.com it says uh choose your charity slash nonprofit. go to whale scout Put it in there, and everything that you you buy off Amazon, Whale Scout gets a uh, a small portion of that. So, smile.amazon.com. We appreciate it, everybody. I had to go see which of your books that I actually owned because I wasn't sure if it was. You don't all own a hundred things WWE fans should know and do before they die. I I, I do not own that book. Oh, wow, no. it's ten bucks on Amazon, dude. What are you waiting for? You just send it to me, bro. I promise, if you got it, you wouldn't regret it. It do, can I get one of these? You know I, what? I need the hard cover. You know what? I got to say this, everybody. Listen. When I say I promise you won't regret it, I'm never wrong, okay? I promise if you get a cameo, you ain't going to regret it. I promise if you buy one of these books, you're not going to regret it. I promise if you watch that match, that mixed tag with Tom coming up all out weekend, you ain't going to regret it. I pretty much had to ban one guy from the board because he decided he was going to trash talk my my uh my wrestling performances well, like bro you may as well just say i tapped during training i ain't gonna i ain't gonna stand for that one you're out of here man Have chris sorry get never mind never mind chris dickinson has filed <laughs> suit against two women regarding accusations they made against him of domestic abuse 
According to a report from PW Insider, Dickinson's lawsuit was filed July 22nd before the United States District Court of New Jersey. His suit alleges the two women committed, quote, blatant acts of defamation that have hurt his professional wrestling career. On April 27, independent wrestler Christina Von Erie took to social media, accused Dickinson of being physically and verbally abusive to her. Cody would push me, hold me down, block me from getting to the door, or even pulling me off the door and throwing me on the bed or the floor. He would throw and break things. He didn't care what it was, she wrote. On April 30th, a second woman posted a lengthy statement on social media that never directly mentioned Dickinson by name. Quote, I don't know Christina. I've heard a lot about her. I'm scared to share my story, but I can't sit there and watch her get called a liar when I know everything she said about him is 100% true. Reading what she posted triggered so many emotions for me. I look back now, I can't believe the vile things I let happen, that I put up with. Yeah, there was some physical stuff, but he makes it feel like no big deal. Dickinson announced on April 30th he was pulling out of GCW Life Goes On in Atlantic City in light of the accusations. He has not returned to the promotion since. I have made the decision to pull myself off of Saturday's event, he wrote at the time. He has wrestled only two shows since the accusations were made. Lost to Tanahashi on a set of strong tapings from Philadelphia May 15th. Also wrestled in a show from Italy in June. So that's the update on Chris Dickinson. Filed suit against two accusers. So we shall see where it goes from there. We have SmackDown tomorrow. Gunther versus Shinsuke Nakamura for the Intercontinental title. Raquel Rodriguez and Aliyah versus Shotzi and Zia Lee. In a... Uh... You know what's funny about these... What's that? <laughs> well... I'll get to the last match. Uh, Liv Morgan and Shayna Baszler will have a contract signing. So uh, we got the brackets for the the women's tag team tournament. And we got the brackets for the trios title tournament in AEW. And with all due respect to uh, everybody involved, one side of the bracket in both cases is way stronger than the other side of the bracket. So, I mean, if you look at the the brackets for the AEW Trios tournament, well, I mean, first, the, the WWE Women's Tournament, the two best teams that probably should be in the finals are on the same side of the bracket. So we pretty much know they're not going to be in the finals. And then for the, uh, for the AEW Trios title tournament, I mean, really, on the uh, right side of the bracket, I mean, honestly, with all due respect, the strongest team is the House of Black. And I, I, I don't know if maybe the Dark Order is going to the finals. I mean, quite frankly, I will say this. It seems preposterous, the idea that the Dark Order is going to the finals. But after the Dynamite show on Wednesday, where the Young Bucks asked, asked Hangman to be their partner, and he said, no, he's not in the tournament. He's going to be in the corner of the Dark Order. And so the Young Bucks are almost assuredly going to end up with Kenny Omega as their partner. So you'd have Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks versus the Dark Order managed by Hangman. That is actually a... uh, They could make that a pretty compelling story. I don't know if that's where they're going at the end. But, uh, yeah. Death Triangle versus Will Ospreay and Aussie Open. Andrade, Dragon Lee, and Roosh versus the Young Bucks and a partner. That's next Wednesday. House of Black versus Dark Order. And the best friends against the Trust Busters. <laughs> Is Nikita Lyons in that group? <laughs> of, I have nothing against the Trust Busters. Well, I shouldn't say I have nothing against them because I've never actually seen them wrestle before. <laughs> I know one of them is Harlan. And I kind of have a bone to pick with that guy because of that whole Joe Gacy thing. <laughs> It's like of all the teams in AEW, of all of the six-man potential combinations, the Trust Busters are in this tournament. Brian, you're bearing the lead in that group. Slim J. Oh, yeah, Slim J. In 2022, who's not slim anymore compared to a lot of the rest of the indie scene. Like, just cut J out there. But I, this is the most... I, like I put on Twitter, it was the most random King of Trios team that I've ever he seen. He should now be Mesomorph J. This was a now promotion. That he's if I'm, if, <laughs> that was, <laughs> this is a promotion, if I'm not crazy and I remember things correctly, that was built on three person units, correct? Yeah. Man, 
injuries, I guess. I don't know what happened here. Where's the where's the black? Listen, Rose, listen, I know some of you are diehard AEW fans. I know. Listen, I love AEW as well. But this guy here, what's wrong with the trust busters, Brian? Besides you haven't watched them. That's the point. It and, doesn't matter if they're on dark. LeBro, right. listen, hold on a second. Hold on right. a second. Right. I could watch dark every single solitary week. I could watch elevation every single solitary week. I would still be asking why in a trios tournament that's been in the making for three years where we have nothing but three-man teams, we have an eight-team tournament, and one of them has never, ever, ever appeared on Dynamite until yesterday. I would still ask that question. And it's okay to ask that question. I'm not a bad person, and I'm not the only one. No, and you counter that argument by saying, if you had planned this out properly, we would know what was going on on Dynamite, the number one show that people are watching for these titles that seem to be very important. They would be letting us know that something was taking place qualifying on Dark to see what team could actually get up and get a spot on the roster, and they haven't done that. Just just Ari Davari busting in, kicking in the door, going, hey, I'm rich, I'm here, and we're going to be a team now. So that's it doesn't really work that way. Plus, there are other units like Blackpool and other groups that are Blackpool, not represented here with Jericho any Appreciation Society. I mean, you there want you me go. to go on through the break? Exactly. You can do two teams out of the JAS, for heaven's sakes. Now I need to go get a drink of water. I hope you're all happy. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I mean, we got to, oh, hey, we're back. Whole yeah. the whole commercial I was just rattling off teams. There you and was. then then person says i completely agree that it deserves to be criticized for better or for worse but some people are flipping their lid bro you know why i flipped my lid in the last segment bro why if you want to put the trust busters in it ain't that big a deal okay i'm pointing out i i was merely pointing out that somehow the trust busters in this tournament after all these years uh, there, there's uh, how many how many six-man teams can we come up from ring of honor uh-huh. Or from New Japan. Well, that's we just had a New Japan here. AEW pay per view. I flipped. Hold on. Hold on. I flipped my lid. I flipped my lid because somebody had to say, if you only watch Ram- like uh, Dark, it no, that does make me flip my lid. This is not on me. Okay, this is not on me or anybody else not watching Dark or Elevation. Okay, it's on the fact that there's dozens. Of six-man teams to choose from between AW, Ring of Honor, New Japan, wherever that have been on TV that have been working for the last three years, and they're not represented. And we've got the trust busters in there. Yeah, I question that. I'm not angry about it. I'm angry at being told I'm not. It's not okay to be questioning this. It is okay. It's okay to question things that AW does. Do you understand? It's okay. Not the end of the world. God help me. And you're not an old man for doing it. And there's a bigger story that, you know, or or talking point, which is sometimes for the people that are the hardest core AEW fans who really know what's going on all over the place and keep up with everything, they lay an expectation on to a more casual viewer and a more casual fan that doesn't have that opportunity to keep up with things. And it's like, no. You know, that's with Ring of Honor. I think we proved it and last time around. It was too much on TV, too much going on that wasn't AEW, losing the plot a little bit because you wanted to promote that pay per view and do it with guys who were on the roster. Well, okay. Well, now you're basically bringing in a team from ROH with the Trustbusters, because I believe that's what the whole point of Ari Davari was going in for anyway. And I didn't even know Parker Boudreaux was signed to an AEW contract or would be appearing on AEW TV. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. But at a time where you need to have Dark, or I'm sorry, Rampage be as hyped up as possible because of the ratings it's been getting, now you have the Trustbusters. <laughs> And again, people go, well, it's a natural step up from darker elevation. It's like, no, not when you're trying to hype that show up, not when these titles are supposed to be huge. And I know this might be a, you know, making a mountain out of a molehill for some people that are looking at this one match that probably won't have anything to do with the finals as being a big deal. But it is one of those things that I hope they win needs to be called out. And that's what's going on. So that's what it is. Amari Miller has apologized for tweets that she made about Sasha Banks. 
Miller posted a tweet on Wednesday crediting Ember Moon with being the, quote, first and only African-American NXT women's champion. Miller wrote that her goal in NXT is to become the second. When it was pointed out that Banks was NXT women's champion before Moon, Miller tweeted, quote, for everyone on Twitter, fully black NXT champion. I'm aware what I posted. Sasha is great and legendary for sure. Let's not forget. Miller also posted a reply to someone where she wrote that, German, uh, that Banks is, quote, German and black, but not African-American. She then deactivated her account after receiving backlash for the tweets. On Thursday, she returned to Twitter and issued an apology, writing that, quote, she meant something super well, and it came across horribly. Have I ever mentioned that if we just got everyone off Twitter, this would be probably a lot better place? I mean... Yes. Well, <laughs> the former page gave an update on her in-ring status on the sessions with Renee Paquette, which is no longer oral sessions. It's now the sessions. Soraya announced this June that she would be departing WWE when a contract expired in July. In the statement announcing her departure, she indicated she would one day compete in the ring again. She said she is feeling fantastic physically. She said that if she were to return, it would be, quote, for a really big moment. I feel fantastic. I really do feel fantastic, she said. I still have the mental block of, if I get it, if, if I was to get in the ring, what if? If I was to have to be in the ring, it would be for a really big moment to wrestle. I'll do promos here and there for big companies, but to actually wrestle, it would have to be a really big moment. Tom should have texted her to be his partner. I was going to say, wait, I thought I heard a really this before, big moment. and that was actually you. Yeah. You well, saying I, I something like that. I understand, you know, me and, me and Paige. Mm. We're like this. Yeah. She said uh, she'll have as many retirement matches as Ric Flair. That's my gimmick. <laughs> Always, dude. I'm like Ric Flair. I'm going to have a ton of retirement matches, she said. <laughs> Ric Flair, I'm going to be your age and be say, I'll be saying, one last guy, one last, my last one, guys, I promise. Well, hey, take an IV before you get in there, lady. No, the, the, you know, you know, you know, the secret is to getting in there, Mike. Don't be seventy-seven years old. No, from from pretty much every uh, report, mm -hmm. the secret is don't change everything at the last second. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, you don't know yes. what I'm saying. Yes and no. Okay, but go ahead. Listen, I'm training for a match with Tom. Okay. Yes. And I'm eating well, and I'm sleeping well, mm -hmm. and I'm, well, that's not you know, exactly. Well, I wasn't sleeping well the last couple of days, but the point is, in general, okay. So now, if everything's going great, and I'm doing everything fine in training, and I feel good, and I feel great, yeah. then the week of the show, probably not a bad idea to you know stop training, uh, start drinking heavily. Uh, you know, the day of the yeah. show, decide not to eat anything at all. Doesn't sound good. Don't no. drink any water because you want to be below a certain... Like, why would you change everything at the last minute? Which, admitted, he admits that. Everybody wow. that was there at the building said the same thing. I was trying to figure out what that had to do with Paige. Now I understand. It's well, yeah, I mean, listen, if you're... if you're... Brian, time out for a second, though, Yes. Before you go on. Because the more he talks the more he just throws <laughs> a ton of, of of dirt on the grave because he had plantar fasciitis. He's 77 years old. He was drinking all weekend when he's already got hit heart issues. You know he wanted to bleed, so now you got that issue going on. He's dehydrated, and you start asking yourself then, because he keeps talking, what doctors checked him out? Was he really able to go? Is this something that they just because they couldn't move the date because it was attached to SummerSlam? Did other things get looked past? Because the more he talks, the more that's becoming the case. So maybe if he just shut up, then we could go back to talking about those other things that you are. But the fact of the matter is, is that dude passed out twice. He was shaking. It wasn't good. Well, and yes, I it think that's good. where everything should probably end. I, with that. I don't think anybody has stated that it was good. It was a, it and was with a freaking Paige, disaster. And you know what? With Paige and God bless her soul, because so many people have come back and medicine, modern medicine is amazing. But you talk about if things, if you don't change things, everything ends up being okay. 
You don't have to wrestle. You got such a big Dude, personality. You're, you're absolutely right. Okay. And you know what? If she wants to, great. If she's cleared, no problem with that. But you know what? I just like, I would like her as a personality. I don't need to see people come back from these neck injuries and spinal stenosis and have these issues, especially with her at a young age, the way she was. My point on Ric Flair is that I asked the question the day after the show. I said, how in God's name did I watch all of that training footage that was not that it was not years ago. It was like weeks, maybe a month earlier, where he moved well. He took bumps. We saw everything. The best of Brian. No, but we no. don't know what he looked like after that. You don't know what he looked like after that. We never heard about any of that. If they we did hear about it, we actually heard it from from all of the people involved that were like, "He can do this." From Jay Lethal said involved. that he could do this. From all the people involved, was Jay Lethal going to bury Ric Flair if he had a bad day after training? He's not going to bury him, but exactly. he's not, not going to talk about how he did a great job. And, and I he, saw you know it with he's my own eyes. He's also not going to talk about, you're right, I saw what we saw and the little bit we saw, that was true. But he also wasn't going to bring out any negatives that could have been the case too, okay? No, but the point is. At some point, Flair it was broke only, down on the way to the thing and they didn't like show any footage of that, did they? It was a month earlier that he was fine. And so there was obviously a lot that he did wrong at the last second. Whether it's Why are you not saying it's drinking, the last second? Not, because literally the day of the show, he didn't eat and he didn't drink. So then where were the doctors then to go checking this guy before he got in? And again, we wouldn't know about any of this if he just would shut up. But now people on his side I've seen are upset about people thinking, you know, or the worst going into that match. And it's like, well, stop reinforcing it. Listen, okay. If Ric Flair was cleared by a doctor... OK, and the day of the show, he decided not to eat or drink. A doctor is not going to examine him before the match and go, you should not be in the ring. How many you hit the wall when you're in the ring are you making? after not eating or drinking all day? We I'm not saying he weekend. should have done we it. We saw him all weekend, yes, drinking and doing all that stuff. We yes. knew he was doing that. So then it makes it even worse that he goes in so haggard and nobody got him the fluids to replenish, even though You're they knew he right. was hurt because of the plantar fasciitis and other things that were surely... Look, You're right. And my point is, if you would have eaten and drank and just had a normal day uh, like you did all of those other days, he probably wouldn't have passed out twice in the ring. What, I'm not once? advocating for him what, to wrestle once? again. No, he probably wouldn't have passed out at all. How do you know it wasn't because of the blood loss, Brian? Well, I don't know it's because of the blood loss, but exactly. I know. Exactly. So then you can't say what you're saying then with any conviction and say I know you're, you want to be right. Up. But it's likely he was dehydrated and didn't eat Did all day. Say, look, I know you want to stand and say that you're on the top of this hill with this argument, but I'm, I'm surely not the only one who's looking at it from my point of view here. I, I would suspect it was far more likely lack of water and food than massive blood loss. Maybe that was part uh, of I it. didn't say massive blood loss. You're putting words in my mouth. Stop. Back in a moment, Observer Live! Uh, I'm going to talk about dynamite. Mm -mm -mm. I hope you're taking heat. Taking heat? Yeah. You clearly haven't been looking at the chat, brother. You're taking the heat. Uh, but that's all right. I ain't got no time for these folks. Darby Nonsense. Allen beat Brody King in a coffin match. They Incredible. had a very, very violent match. Blood everywhere from, uh, well, everybody, actually. And then uh, Darby ended up getting a, a chain. Actually, first all of the Stan, uh, all of the blokes ran in. Buddy Matthews is back, and uh, it's huge. I don't know what to say about Buddy Matthews, but uh, he was huge. gone for a while, and uh, and there was a reason for it. But apparently, oh. he's back now, oh. and uh, it has nothing to do with him being huge. Oh. Uh, apparently, he uh, or maybe it does. No, it doesn't. He oh. uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. He took some dates that were not approved, and I think there oh. was a little bit of heat for a while. Oh. But uh, I guess the heat has abated, and he is back. But anyway, so uh, they had this match, and then Sting popped out of the casket and uh, beat some dudes up. And then Darby grabbed a, a chain, and he choked out Brody. And they, they did the opposite of what Brody did to him. He choked him out, and then Brody collapsed, fell off the apron, fell into the coffin, and in landing in the coffin, the door automatically closed. It was Awesome. Incredible. A fantastic finish. Darby gets the win. And that was that. John Moxley promo. And then a uh, Chris Jericho promo. Dude, this match should have been like a, a pay-per-view match. 
because they only had two weeks, but they were so good. The match was so great. If they would have had like a month to build this thing up after two and a half years, I think this thing would have been a great, great pay-per-view main event. As it was, it was a fantastic TV main event. We had La Faccion and Gobernable, Andrade and Rouge versus Penta and Ray Phoenix. And they had a, uh, it was a tornado match, so no tags, just everybody doing 8 million crazy spots. Penta's mask got tied in the ropes. He actually unmasked himself in order to make a save, which was funny because in the end it didn't matter. They still got beaten anyway. And uh, he ended up outside. They killed poor Phoenix with the bull's horns and then the uh, hammerlock DDT. So a, a big win for the Faction as they move on to face the Young Bucks in the trios tournament. This is a very good match. We had the Young Bucks and Hangman and the Dark Order. And <laughs> after all this time, Matt. Degrassi. I never watched Degrassi Junior High, but I imagine some of the acting, that's, that's what this is. After all this time, Matt finally apologizes to the Hangman. He says he, if he could take it all back, he would. And what they want is for him to just team with them for the trio's titles. Let's go. The steady. Hung Bucks can ride again. We need to go to homecoming, win those six And the Hangman titles. says, you know what? I can't. I'm not in the tournament. I owe it to these guys. They've stood behind me this whole time. I will be in the corner of the Dark Order in this tournament. So I think you need to find somebody that's never turned their back on you. And the Young Bucks are like, ah, oh, that's, that's cool, all right. Yeah. And they walk off and... And then uh, Brandon Cutler Brandon. says, I think they're talking about me. And they said, shut up, Brandon. Turn that camera off. I thought this segment was fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. Luchasaurus beat Anthony Henry. And then uh, Christian appears on the big screen. Jungle Boy runs to the back. Uh, Luchasaurus beats up these security guards. They're trying to keep them apart. This allows, this, this allows Christian to escape. And Luchasaurus, again, never puts his hands on Christian. Mm. Miro did a promo, which, uh, uh, so uh, I thought he said, I accept your gift. Other people said he said, I reject your gift. Mm -hmm. It appears that Miro is going to be feuding with the House of Black. Yeah. But uh, that's how I kind of took that, too, just to jump in. These things aren't up my alley, bro. Not up my alley. I just, I don't know what's going on. When when you send, uh, what's her name out there? Um, eye patch. Julia Hart. It? Julia Hart there to to be the messenger. Why do I have a feeling? Because her name has been brought up so much and her image invoked so much that the former Lana, C.J. Perry, will at some point appear and lead Miro to the light that he'll have to in need to face the House of Black. I love that the chat can't decide whether he said accept or reject. Eh. Whatever it is. It's actually pretty cool for something that goes on where you never see Guy Russell. Like, usually I want to see a guy win some matches. But with Miro, I know he can kick ass. So whatever this is, as long as, like, I guess as long as the art is good, I'll, I'll go ahead and take it. We had Jay Lethal, Sanjay, and Satnam, not in the trios tournament, come out. And <laughs> okay. they had a confrontation with Wardlow and FTR. Not in the trios tournament. Now, they should be. And uh, FTR ended up hitting the big rig on Jay Lethal, who wants another shot at Wardlow's title, although I don't know if he's going to get it after that, but I guess we'll see. Does this mean FTR is defending the ROH titles against Satnam Singh and uh, Sanjay? I don't know. Or Sanjay so. and Jay Lethal? I Actually, not. that would be a good match, but I mean... Uh... Sanjay's not wrestling. Well, oh God, Satnam Singh and Jay Lethal? Ricky Starks beat Aaron Solo, and afterwards, I guess to uh, rehab him from what happened last week, where as a babyface, he started a fair fight and then got his ass kicked. Well, So Nick Camarado hits the ring. He fights him off. It's two-on-one. Uh, he avoids a chair shot. He bails. He runs up the ramp. He escapes. He smiles. And then Hobbs is furious at the fact that he wasn't able to uh, finish him off here tonight. Starks and Hobbs are awesome. Together or feuding. Love it. The Gun Club and uh, Billy Gunn, not in the trios tournament, had no. a uh, deal backstage. Stokely walked up and wanted to recruit the Gun Club. Billy told him to get out of here. Danhausen walked up and said he would see them in the ring with his furry friend on Friday. By the way, Danhausen and Bear Country, 
not in the trios tournament. But it won't even be Bear Country. It's the Vintner. Dan Housen and the Vintner will be facing the Gun Club on Friday. Beer to Housen. We had uh, Trust Busters making their uh, their debut backstage. Yeah. At that point, did you think about turning A E on for the new uh, live court show that they have? I, on I there? didn't, but I, I just could not believe that I was watching uh, Harlan on my screen, Harlan. who has hair now. Yeah, He's now he Harlan. Like <laughs> Should have been his name, Harlan. Uh, what? Well, never mind. Obviously, somebody said something to somebody about how he must have looked, you know, training or something like that in NXT because of all the people to bring in. It just kind of random really is. Slim J, I understand. And I understand bringing some people in for ROH, especially some people with experience. If you do want to only have the Briscoes and mostly younger, cheaper talent. But I mean, I'm just really surprised that Parker Boudreaux, of all people, is somebody you took a gamble on and is on national TV right now. Oh, man. We had Jade Cargill and Madison Rain. And well, uh, God bless her. I hear she's a nice person. But uh, Madison Rain got hired as uh, as a trainer. She's had two matches on national television. They have both been very bad. And uh, this one was bad enough that Jade Cargill actually looked the better of the two. And it just went on forever. There was a lot of standing there just waiting for something to happen. And finally, Jade hit Jaded for the pin. And then Athena attacked her. And it uh, looks like uh, Athena versus Jade is going to be the match likely for the TBS title at the pay-per-view. Who's had the best mass match with Jade? Because, like, you know, they, somebody's got to be a whisperer for her, and they need to find them quick because it's not like she had good matches with Serena D. didn't have a good one here with Madison Rain. You, like, you start picking people who have had experience, who have gone in there with her, and granted, one match is only one match, but, like, they got to find somebody because I love Jade as a character. I love a lot of the stuff about her, but, like, <laughs> there's got to be something that will make her look better in the ring. Uh, we'll do. Uh, we'll have Fauntleroy do Rampage here after the break. But uh, next week on Dynamite, Andrade, Roosh, and Dragon Lee against the Young Bucks and very likely Kenny Omega. Tony Storm versus Kylan King. And then Brian Danielson faces Daniel Garcia in a best of three falls match. So they're getting that match over with. Danielson, I'm sure, is going to get his win back. And then we'll have Danielson and Jericho most likely at the pay-per-view. Hey, do you think they could actually split falls and then go to a draw or have some sort of no contest where Brian doesn't get his shot and well, then he's got to have some sort of they could do ultimate that. match? I think that he's going to get his win back, but in best of three, you know, Daniel Garcia can at least get another win over him. So yeah. I think that's probably what they're going to end up doing. But then the main event was John Moxley and Lionheart Chris Jericho <laughs> with his Lionheart gear, his Lionheart song, his Lionheart hair, his Lionheart physique since he lost all that weight. <laughs> and he went in there with Moxley. And, dude, these are two guys that cannot have a bad match together. They're made for each other because they're both very good wrestlers and they're also very good brawlers and so they can each and they'll 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 lay into each other they'll just get in there and they'll go and uh jericho ripped out his earring so moxley pretty sure gigged his ear he's bleeding all over from the ear yes and then uh, piper would be proud jericho accidentally hit an exposed buckle legitimately and legitimately got busted open he had a big slit right down the front of his head he's bleeding everywhere which actually made the match even better and actually turned Jericho babyface by the end, because Jericho, they did a they did a uh, walls of Jericho through an entire commercial break. He puts him in the walls. They go to commercial. They come back, and Moxley's just getting the ropes. The whole break they did that walls of Jericho. Then we have the near falls at the end. Uh, Moxley kicked out of the Judas effect. He kicked out of a belt shot. Uh, Jericho puts him in the lion tamer. Jericho's bleeding from the face. He's got the lion tamer on. The place is going crazy. They actually believe he might actually win at this point. Moxley switches it over. He uh, puts him in the rear naked choke on the mat. Jericho's bleeding in this choke. He's pounding the mat. The people are screaming and going nuts. And then he violently taps. Dude, this match ruled. This match was awesome. 
And uh, afterwards, Sammy, Hager, they hit the ring. And uh, Blackpool Combat Club. Yeah, not Sammy Hagar. <laughs> Sammy Hager. They hit the ring. And then CM Punk makes his return. Everybody runs into his arm on the ramp. Then he gets into the <laughs> ring, throws everybody out, starts dancing around like Eric Bischoff on one leg to show that his foot's good. And then him and Moxley have a stare down. And Moxley flips him off, shoulder checks him. And people booed John Moxley. And uh, the thing with Moxley is this bro don't care. Like, this is not he's a guy. Sorrow, yeah. This guy is not Liv Morgan where, you know, if people boo him, he's going to start crying in the middle of the ring. Dude, he he's all for it. Like, you boo this guy, he's just going to go full heel on you. Mm-hmm. And they'll love him again when this is over. It's going to be a great feud, I suspect. I think this is going to be a great f- four weeks up until... Uh, until all out. You need to have a shade of gray. Like the Koloffs. Like the Russians used to be that thing in, in back in the day in the NWA. Like no matter if the Road Warriors were feuding with the, the Rock and Roll Express or whatever, everybody hated the, the Russians. And to have a group like the, the Blackpool Combat Club, we used to see Claudio afterwards hyping Moxley up for flipping him off and giving him the shoulder check. And we know what Brian Danielson's all about. Like you have your Mr. Softy if there's going to be one in Wheeler Yuta, but even him, you know, look at the blood that's been, you know, splattered on him and you see how he goes out there and again they're an awesome group and not in the trios tournament this person goes why bring Liv into this <laughs> what because Liv Morgan was the biggest baby face they had she came out for a promo everybody booed her and she totally lost her composure she almost cried and she sweared on live she swore on live tv that's why I brought it up because some people if they're a baby face they don't want to be booed some people they don't care you're looking at one. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And yeah, that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure Filthy can't drink any water or eat before our match over all that weekend. Mm. He's going to go in there dehydrated. Look at you. And I'm going to kill pick the, the bones. You could suffer a concussion, for God's sake. That man has kids, you sick bastard. I'm not going to try and do anything like that. What kind of example are you setting for the youth of America, like Billy Starks, Brian Alvarez? Are we going to have to get Debbie Malenko Billy Starks and I are on the same page, bro. She'd make sure he couldn't drink anything either. Actually, you know what? She probably has set up Nick Wayne or something like that. She's devious. That girl's been on the road now for a while. Hmm. Well, anyway, tonight on the Brian Vinny Show, only for subscribers, we've got 45 uh, minutes for Dynamite and 45 minutes for NXT 2.0. That's 90 minutes to review these two shows. So if you're uh, angry I missed a detail here or there, fear not. We'll get everything coming up tonight on the Brian Vinny Show. We only have so much time on national radio, everybody. If I only had time. If I only had more time, I would still talk exactly as much as I did because i got to save something for the subscribers. Mm-hmm. NXT 2.0, by the way, 597,000 viewers, a point one three in 18-49. to 20th on cable, down 13.3% from last week. So, eh, it's what it is. We'll see how it does when they do their big heat wave show, where hopefully everyone there drinks water. Because it is hot out, everybody. Can you all drink mm-hmm. some water? Lord have mercy. And put on deodorant, too, while you're at it. So kill Bruce Lee, heat stroke. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. And he was young and in shape. Yeah. Right at time. I want to thank you all yeah, for listening. You can bring up Brandon, too, for, man, end Most the show on a downer there, brother. Most of you for listening. And we'll be back later on tonight. Brian and Vinny's show back tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be a fun show because it's Friday. Dave Meltzer's going to be on the show as well as Trevor Murdoch. Oh, my. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.